Um, he's very endearing. He's very charming. He's very sensible. Um, and Trevor Noah is foreign. <laughs> And da does. <laughs> oh, my God. oh man, here we are, St. Albans Central. Welcome to the show. Um, I am here to announce that um, I am going to be taking over uh, the Daily Show with Trevor Noah. Um, yeah, Comedy Central called me. It's like, hey, we're failing. Uh, we really got nothing to lose. So you, we've seen. Um, your podcast, uh, one of our producers is one of your seven listeners, so we thought we would give you a shot. So here I come. St. Alban will be the new host of The Daily Show. I am um, yeah, excited. No, it's, it's interesting. Um, obviously, shows like The Daily Show had a shelf life once like the internet came around. And I think, too, it, I mean, Trevor Noah did a pretty good job. Um, but John Stewart is just like a national treasure. He is, yeah. you know, I just seeing him, um, like fighting for the soldiers who are next to those like, uh, burn pits of like trash. And like, he's just like, why aren't you guys paying for their health care? They gave their lives in, um, and he's very endearing. He's very charming. He's very sensible. Um, and Trevor Noah is foreign. <laughs> I, 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 dude, I hundred percent think that people don't like have a hard time with Trevor Noah because he's foreign, <laughs> because he's he's a foreigner who lives in the United States and just shits on the United States every single episode. Um, I, yeah, I don't. I, I think it's it's good for him to move. I don't know. I think he's been doing it for like seven years. Oh, or wow. something like that. Mm -hmm. I think um I think he I I saw him when he came to Indy. Um he played the Marat Theater, which I think is about three thousand. No, it's probably like maybe four. It's pretty big, yeah. Uh it's pretty big, but he sold out like four or five shows. But Dang. his stand up was great, you know. Um I, I, I think I don't know. I, I don't know what The Daily Show is going to do. I don't know what Comedy Central is going to do. Comedy Central is just struggling, dude. Like, they only make money on the office reruns. That's, like, the only way they're making money. Or South Park. It's South Park's I was like, Central, I think right? The Office finally made it to, like, laugh. Like, yeah, the yeah, yeah. local antenna station. Yeah, but South Park's <laughs> on Comedy yeah. Central, right? Yeah. yeah. But it's, it, you know, I don't know what they... Actually, one thing I thought would be kind of interesting... I doubt this would ever happen, but Dave Smith is a comedian who is also very political. He's a libertarian. He has, um, I can't remember what his pod, uh, podcast is called, but I thought that that would be an interesting um, replacement is if Dave Smith came in and replaced, but there's just no way. He's too, he, he's too unhinged, you know? Um, these These like late night shows and these daily shows, it's just a failing formula. Um, be and I think it's just because of the, it's the, it's the, it's the networks, you know, the internet, you're free, you know, you can't threaten someone's life. You can't murder someone on camera, but other than that, you can pretty much do whatever you want. <laughs> um, and on these major networks who are trying to, you know, sell ads for huggies, they're not going to want somebody getting on the, on the <laughs> camera and just being like, uh, was it George W. Bush hates black people or whatever <laughs> Kanye West said, you know? Yeah. So these late night shows, they're, they're, they're struggling so much. So I don't, I wonder who will replace Trevor Noah, but I also, I just, I feel like they can't really replace, nobody's going to watch it. No. Like the only reason the daily show was successful was because Trevor Noah came on for seven years and i think he did a good job but then they had like hassan minaj um 
he was on there and he kind of made made a name for himself but man you got it like these people like they have to own their own networks and if they don't it's just you know they're in trouble and i think it's the same with the late night the late show and stuff i, I think james corden yep, those james corden's gonna be gone um which i still remember when they announced james corden and i'm just like the guy who invented the cordon blue, you know, like who is this guy? Nobody, nobody knew who he was. Um, and then I think he did a he did a great show, but the but late night just shifted so much. Kazoon <gasps> tape. Damn. Right, Woo. Enough of that. Um, the late night show. I mean, it was Letterman. It was. Um, even Conan. I think Conan kind of brought some of the goofiness to it. Mm -hmm. But then once Fallon took over and then James Corden, it was nobody watched the interviews. They just watched uh, carpool karaoke, you know, or these dumb games that, that yep. people play, which is entertaining. Um, but it just kind of felt like cheap entertainment that there was just no substance. And I think like now that there's podcasts like this one or – you know, you have like Rogan's podcast, you have Armchair Expert, you have all of these um, long form podcasts that are really authentic. I remember I was listening to Rogan mm. for like maybe like a year or two. And then I like watched like the Colbert, like Stephen Colbert mm. li or whatever his show was. Um, not the Colbert Report, but the late night show. Mm -hmm. And I just remember I'm like, this is so fake. It's too quick. It's and it's just gr it's just so inauthentic. And it's like it's very hard to go from uncensored authenticity to inauthentic, um, you know, fabricated television. It's just too fast to segment. It's like you get yeah. five minute interviews with celebrities yep. or you know major whatever icons, yep. and it's just the whole format was built for. TV 30, 40 years ago, mm -hmm. but now we're trying to keep it going. The world's it's so fast. And like the working. only reason you know, all these late shows are are still alive is be probably because they have a YouTube channel yep. and they make revenue from YouTube. Mm -hmm. That's the only time I watch Jimmy Fallon. That's the only time I watch, I don't know, any of them. Yeah. You know? And like, I keep forgetting, like, Seth Myers has a show. I'm like, how does he, nobody even talks about Seth Myers, you know? It's Jimmy Kimmel because he's crying about Trump, or it's Jimmy Fallon because he's like, "Hey, hey, hey!" And then people are like, "That guy's a drunk," you know. <laughs> or it's James Corden who is overweight, you know. Um, but hey, man, I mean, he's overweight. I'm overweight. I got a show. Yeah, I can't you know? be in the same room with someone like James. But Corden. I think it's interesting too. Like all of these shows. I mean, there's probably hundreds of people that work for these shows. Yeah, that's what's Which is insane. sad about it. But it's like, you know, I mean, this show, hey. it's two people in a room, Come you on. know? And it like, it could like, you know, yeah. and, and, and you got the internet as long as you can upload. So, but I'm also curious about SNL mm. because SNL is, again, I only watch SNL on YouTube. And I think Pete Davidson's leaving or will leave. I believe so. Yeah. Um, So, I mean, he's like the last star maybe uh and keenan's he, still on there i think but he's also yeah, going yeah. i think soon but like i mean pete davidson's the only one who's really transcended yeah snl mostly because he's like dated like gorgeous women like <laughs> kate beckinsale ariana yeah, grande Lord. And, and kim kardashian well mm. done sir what happened there like what i don't know dude vibe? i mean i think he's funny and i think he has a big dick <laughs> So, hey, you know. <laughs> That's the sauce. Yeah. But, yeah, so, I mean, SNL is – SNL struggles, too. I mean, dude, I remember they did a they did a, a, a sketch about Joe Rogan doing ivermectin or, like, horse pills. It was so cringeworthy. Mm. It was just like – because I'm like, what? Did nobody read about what this pill – and it was – it was so bad, and it's like I can't imagine being because I have a hard time being like inauthentic. If I was on set and I had to do some shitty sketch, I'd be like, "Dude, I can't do this." Yeah. But it's I again, I think it's the medium. It's not the talent, you know. Because I went to I went to Second City with um, Chris Red, who's on SNL, and he's funny. 
He's really, really funny. Uh, Michael Che is really, really funny. Uh, Pete Davidson. They're all all these people are really, really funny. But the media doesn't allow them to, you know, stretch their wings. Yeah. They have to stay within the lines because they got to sell Huggies, dude. They got to sell Lysol. <laughs> and you can't sell Lysol, you know, showing a, a butt cheek, you know, on a Xerox machine with, you, can't do that anymore. you know, I don't know, a baby crying in the, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> but it's like that. I mean like there's shows like um like uh Shane Gillis has Gillian Keeves. Have you seen any of their sketches? Yes. Oh my gosh, dude. Good. So funny. And I remember when I, I think he like launched his show. Uh I think Norm MacDonald tweeted. There's just like SNL, you fucked up. Huge. <laughs> because he's so funny. And he's I don't think he's like necessarily conservative, but he's more like middle ground he's not like a super he's not like yeah all pol- he's not very political but if he does talk politics like it's more conservative which snl needs because like snl most of their jokes tend to be making fun of right-wing yeah. republicans which i'm like that's fine if you want to do that but you're alienating half of the country by doing that you know um but gillian keeps dude that show they have a they have like a special out right now. I think you can pay ten bucks, but it's hmm. the it's some of the funniest stuff. I just like I watch like all of them in a day, and I just like shit my pants, dude. There's so <laughs> much shit everywhere. SNL just feels like if theater kids put on improv. You know, it just doesn't feel like edgy, yeah, yeah. A- at all. It just feels like these are very safe jokes. Or like these are just like campy. Yeah. Funny. SNL feels like Indianapolis improv. <laughs> you know, like yeah. <laughs> it. Oof. I mean, it, granted, it's been years since I've seen improv done in Indianapolis. Yeah. And, woo, woo. <laughs> you know. Um. But yeah, I'm. I mean, the internet's changing everything, man. The world's changed so much. Like who, who would have thought that? You know, SNL would be done. All these late night shows would be done because of the internet, because of YouTube. Yep. Because people like Mr. Beast putting up content, and he has a hundred million subscribers now. Just this independent person that nobody owns. That's freedom. You know. It's wild. But, but yeah, we'll see. And I'm curious, like, of the future. You know, like what, like, will will we even have cable television anymore? In 20 years, will we have cable television? I mean, at this point, we're just bundling all our services into what exactly is like a cable it's gonna package. be it's it's gonna be like YouTube Premium, where they're like premium. It's or well, I guess they already have YouTube. I was like premium. Amazon, but like YouTube Plus, Google are just gonna buy out everybody, and then you're gonna have like a Google subscription yep. to like YouTube and Netflix yep. and like everything, and you're basically gonna be having a Two hundred dollar bill again. Well, yeah, because like, um, what it's like Hulu, ESPN, and Disney have a bundle for like nine, like nineteen yeah. bucks or something like that. But it's crazy. But even then, I wonder about like the future of streaming services because, like, you and I watch TV shows. We but watch TV. Like, yeah. yeah, but well, you watch TV, yeah. but like, I've seen a TV before. Yeah, yeah, but like kids who are younger than us. Oh yeah, they're not watching uh, Euphoria. They're watching YouTube. Yeah. You know? So I wonder if I wonder if what will happen to streaming services in twenty years. Because I mean, we're we're fatigued by these streaming services. I, I am personally. I have like five streaming services. It's too much. And I scroll every one. I'm like, there's and I'm like, there's nothing to watch. And I, but there's infinite amounts of things to watch. Yeah. And this is the this is the problem with streaming services that YouTube beats it. So I have to search everything. Yep. But YouTube, they just got the the home or not the, or your homepage, mm-hmm. and then it just recommends stuff because of the algorithm. I so watch a lot of YouTube because I watch, of that. It just gives I me what I want. I watch YouTube. Watch. Like last night, I um, my wife went to bed early, and I just like was gonna like watch TV, but I'm like why would I watch TV? And then like one of my favorite streamers was on. So I watched on Twitch. Yeah. You know, like streaming services are done. I'll say it. Netflix, Netflix is done. 
give it 20 years, you're going to be done. Or YouTube will buy you out for like $100 million. Some oh, yeah. like chump change, dude. <laughs> but it's going to be a problem because like YouTube's great. YouTube is, it's, I can't think of anything better except like VR tube, you know? That's just going to replace it, what you probably. were saying. It's going to be, but, the, but then YouTube will probably, you know, own the it. Zuckerverse is coming. Yeah. Which, I mean, that also makes me think about, um, I wonder, because like, well, what am I going to say? I wonder if like a big streaming service or something will buy like AMC because hey, they're going down. Like, hmm. you, it, it's kind of like you, a dog that's eighteen, and he you got to help him get up on the couch. That's what movie theaters are. You know, <laughs> you're just like you love them. You remember all the good times, but you know, in the morning you got to make the phone call to put her down. That's what AMC is, you know? <laughs> so I wonder if, like, Netflix or someone would buy AMC. And then you could, like, for... Me and it would be, like, an exclusive thing for members where you could rent out the theater at a discounted price, hmm. you know? And then, like, you could... Or maybe members get it in for free and then they you know, uh, sell popcorn and like, it's almost like a restaurant, like move, like, you know, like, I wonder if like something like that or like Amazon would do that. Cause it's always weird to me. Like I'll go see the movies and then like Amazon, like or prime video does ads there. And I'm like, this is weird. Yeah. This is so weird. But you know, I, I mean, I wonder if that, I think that that could be actually a pretty good, well, yeah, cool I, thing, I was trying to cool look experience. it up. I thought I saw something about Netflix or another streaming service like buying a movie theater to show a specific launch. I can't remember, but yeah. it sounds familiar. But no, honestly, I mean, it could be. A, why not? I mean, it would be a different revenue source because, I mean, Netflix is struggling right now. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I want to say they're struggling. They've kind of peaked. Like, they, I mean, the competition's and it's also, all caught and it, up. Yeah. Yes, the competition all caught up, yeah. and it, which is crazy to me. Can you look it up? How much does Netflix make in a month? I think it's like three or four billion dollars a month or something like that um but yeah what is about it? about a billion a month that's is it under uh it just says how much do they make monthly it says a billion every single month yeah, it, it's 11, crazy about a year yeah. it's crazy to me that and this is how poor i am but to say that your company's struggling yeah when you make one billion dollars a month 12 billion dollars a year you know, mm. um, but yeah, I mean, I think I think these streaming servers because they're all the same. You know, they're gonna have to do something to set them apart. And I I think if Netflix doesn't doesn't shift, you know, yeah, they have hundred hundred nine million users. So you figure all the subscriptions basically adding up. See, so it's it's like hundred and nine million. Yeah, that's it. Uh, it serves 190 countries with over 109 million users. Yeah. That can't be it. That's There's no way. That that's way too little. Overall the company earned 8 billion in total in 2016, 11 billion in 2017. Cuz I thought I just looked up the number like about Dis 950 million a month, so almost a billion. A Disney month. Plus pa surpassed them. What's the biggest streaming service by numbers? I thought I mean maybe it, because yeah, I don't know. I mean, that, there was the golden age of Netflix, you know, five, six years ago. Oh, okay, looks like that was outdated. So Netflix has 225 million Okay, so that makes so. sense. Uh, and Prime has 205. Disney has about 130. That's just according to, like, 20. The, the interesting thing about Prime is, like, do they really – have Prime Video members, or is it just the Amazon Prime? Oh, yeah, it's Prime Video, yeah, specifically. Oh, that's interesting. Do you, you can just get Prime Video? Uh, Well, you have to, I think, you, can you? I don't know, because that seems like you're double dipping, dude. Amazon, you're dirty dogs, Come double on. dipping, dude. Though they got the NFL. That's the other thing, dude. It's like, at some point, a I streaming service is going to have the exclusive rights. Yeah. to Like, that will be the next game changer. If Netflix 
Or I mean, it'd probably be Amazon because they already got Thursday Night Football. I was just watching before you came up. Exactly, like it's the Bears game tonight, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, it like that will be a game changer if yeah. if Amazon got the exclusive rights to football. You know. Oh yeah. But we'll. I mean, yeah, we'll see. I mean, I think I think streaming services will will fade out um, in the future. Um, but yeah, it would be. I would be really interested to see if like netflix or somebody bought movie theater like amc i think that'd be that would be really cool where you can you can rent it out but then you and then they can just get food and stuff like that that would be, that would be cool. really fun could you sit in a theater like i do for like an hour and a half to pick a movie before you actually start oh it, daddy right? yeah <laughs> daddy yeah you know which <laughs> speaking of the movies movie passes back no way. Movie Pass is back. I got, I mean, this was a little bit ago, but I got um, I got a email from Movie Pass, and I'm just like, dude, this better not be someone like fishing me <laughs> because I'm so excited right now. But they're coming back. They're doing like Movie Pass beta. Um, I think who some the I think the original founder bought it back from the company. You can look it up. Um, they're doing. Um, they're in the beta phase. I think they're only in like three markets. It was like New York, Chicago, and like, I don't know, Seattle or something like that. But they're coming back, man. If you didn't know what Movie Pass was, you missed out on quite possibly the, one of the greatest things that has happened to movies <laughs> since a camera lens. I missed getting the subscription. So it was, I wish I did. If I remember correctly, it was $9.99 a month unlimited movies right? unlimited movies um which i mean they i think they went with like the planet fitness model um which i think they underestimated that people hate going to the gym but they love going to the movies hmm. so um but yeah if i remember correctly it used to be like 50 bucks a month before and i think it they kind of marketed specifically towards like you know, the New York cities, the hmm. bigger markets where going to the movies was like 18 bucks, you know? So if they went to like four mi movies, it would be totally worth it. Yeah. Uh, but then I think they wanted to expand to the 999 and it was a, it was the best three months of my life. That was a wild summer. I remember. That. Oh yeah. I saw so <laughs> many movies and I would go back, but then they, we're like, oh, we're losing. We're bleeding money. <laughs> and I was like, no shit. It's a I'm deal. a musician, and I know that's a bad business move. <laughs> and then I think it went to like three movies a week or something like that. Yeah. Um, like that. And I can't remember what happened next, but then it was like one movie a week, and then they like upped it to like 15 or 20 bucks. They just completely and then was, underestimate yeah. people's capacity to watch movies. Oh, they completely <laughs> underestimated people's like capacity or capacity to want to escape life. Yeah. You know? Um, but I mean, the good the good thing is is that like it gave birth to like, you know, Stubbs and AMC. Cause like AMC does yeah. something like that now. Yep. Which I think AMC I think AMC's is a pretty good deal. You get like uh, I think it's three movies a week mm -hmm. and like free popcorn upgrade or something yeah, like that. Yeah, something with like credits because MoviePass is saying they're going to be similar to what AMC and Regal have. So oh, the, the relaunched MoviePass, you can buy a certain amount of credits. And it says the credits are based on when you see a movie and how big the movie is going to be. So like if you go on like a Tuesday afternoon, that might be like one credit. But if you go on like a Friday night, it's going to be like three credits. Yeah. So trying to curtail some people everyone just getting like unlimited movies yeah. in a month but yeah no i'm excited huh. dude i mean i i'm excited because now like i mean we're we're uh i mean two years out of the pandemic so movies are starting to be a regular thing now um because my wife and i would talk a lot about maybe we should do the show like the amc pass or whatever do or whatever it. it is but if movie pass comes back Ooh boy <laughs> Daddy likey. It was it was one of the greatest things of all time. Hundred mm. percent, dude. God bless you, movie pass. Um so okay, let's uh let's let's end on Kanye, dude. Um Woo Oh boy. Kanye is a wild boy. Dude, I just saw uh we were talking a little bit earlier about this. Um the unedited Tucker Carlson interview. Mm. 
Like he like said some wild stuff about Jewish people. And then he's like, yeah, we can edit that out. And I was just like, you know, like there's a difference between like someone like me or like Tim Dillon just, you know, you know, blaming, like making fun of the Jews or whatever. Jeez. But when you're like someone like Kanye West and you're like talking serious, it's just like, yo. But like, I think in the, the last week I or last episode, I was just like, yeah, Kanye, it's all an act. You know, it's Andy Kaufman. But now I'm like, hmm, maybe he's, maybe he is losing it, dude. You know? <laughs> but it's, yeah. So uh, if, you, if you don't know, JP Morgan, uh, Chase Bank, basically said, hey, we're parting ways with you. Um, which I think is hilarious, especially... If you think the Jews Jesus run the banks, God. jokes on you, Kanye. <laughs> Looks like they do. Oh <laughs> you know, like how funny is that, dude? How funny <laughs> is that? Is that there's all these conspiracy theorists in the world who are like the Jews run the banks, they do this, and then Kanye West is blaming the Jews for all this stuff, and then all of a sudden this bank is like, hey, Bubba. You know, that's hilarious, dude. They do run. I guess they do run the world, you know. But, yeah, it's it's an interesting thing. I mean, I, clearly, I am against banks having, like, the moral high ground on certain things. Like, someone saying racist stuff, I don't think their bank should get, like, you shouldn't get like kicked out of your bank, you know? And it's not like he's getting like blackmailed from all banks. Cause I'm sure other bank, like some credit union, Oh yeah, you know, it like, you know, like Mississippi from, credit like, union. Yeah. From like DeMont, Indiana. They're like, <laughs> Hey, we're DeMont, Indiana. We're dairy. We're dairy farmers credit union. Kanye will take your business, you know? <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I, it feels weird to me. Like I could see like terrorist groups. You like pulling funding because they're murdering people, um, but not somebody who like says some anti-Semitic stuff. Maybe I'm wrong, you know. Um, <laughs> yeah, I don't know about that. One. <laughs> you know, but I just, I don't, I just, I, you know, pulling. I don't know. That seems it seems weird, you know, because I think like it happened to Alex Jones. Um, I think he got in. Um, Gavin McInnes. Oh yeah, they, they both got like I don't know how they even like do. I'm sure they found a, a bank who would do business with them, Jeez. but like closing people's accounts and stuff for There's the some sake. Like, yeah, Patriot for, Bank probably picked them up oh, or something yeah, like yeah. that. Like, it, yeah, yeah, just like closing people's accounts. That just seems that seems extreme to me. You know, running, you love it running a business. You love it, you gotta, dude. Hey, you're running a business. You don't like somebody. Get out of there. Well, sure. <laughs> yes, like on a, on a, like a private level, but uh, it's also like I didn't really listen to the interview, so I I don't know what was. I I mean I he, he well and also the the thing is is like when he taught he was not really making sense, you know. He's yeah. just kind of like the Jews uh, is black people, and you know we're Christians, and like the blood of Jesus, and we're just like what. That's all I picked up. It just felt like ramblings of... It was ramblings, you know. Yeah. But for sure, I mean, there's an element of like, well, it's a private business, you know. But it's also like, okay, because like b governments back banks and basically p if you don't have a bank account, you can't exist in society. Um, I don't know. But I'm sure he'll be fine, dude. Like, yeah. there, what's that black bank that uh, Killer Mike started? I don't know. I think it's called Green Bank or Green Back. Or something like that. <laughs> Your head is going like that. Sounds so racist. <laughs> I don't, look it up. Killer Mike's bank, dude. I think it's called Greenback well, or like Green Bank. With, what's that? Black <laughs> it's a black-owned bank, dude. No, I just. <laughs> Killer Mike started a bank, and I'm pretty sure it's called like Greenback or Green Bank or whatever. Greenwood Bank. Greenwood Bank. Wow, okay, that sounds whatever. boring. As hell. <laughs> yeah, I know. You make it Greenback. <laughs> Greenback's much better. But yeah, so I, I mean, I you know, I'm probably always gonna have beef with someone like Chase Bank, you know, which I'm like, okay, like you you want to take the moral high ground after like all the bonds that you like 
just like put everyone's mortgages in and fucked over like a shit ton of people and yeah. you're gonna take the moral high ground yeah. you gotta be fucking kidding me dude also, chase bank shame on you on the flip side though you know you kind of effed up when a bank is trying to like put like up oh you yeah in the especially like a bank yeah. that's like hey we don't really do anything except take other people's yeah. money and invest it yeah that's all we do <laughs> especially <laughs> someone like i mean Ye- yeezy llc that's oh boy i would imagine it does well yeah Probably makes a few bucks here and there. Like a few buckies, <laughs> a few billies. <laughs> yeah. But free Kanye, man. Hey, free Kanye. Mentally unstable people should be able to have bank accounts, dude. Free Kanye West. I don't bank at Chase, so. Oh, I do. Never Whoa. mind. I'm fucked. <laughs> it's over. It's over. You know, it doesn't bother you too much? Him getting kicked out of the bank? Mm-hmm. I mean... If I watch the interview, maybe I'll have second thoughts, but I don't know. I feel like if I said something crazy and my bank called me the next day and was like, hey, you're out because you said all these things, I'd be like, yeah, fair. Hmm. <laughs> I don't know. But I probably just go elsewhere. There's plenty of banks out there. Yeah. Yeah, we'll see if he gets like new. There's no way. I'm curious about the other banks. Chase things, though, if he's blocked from this. Because isn't there like stadiums and other, you know, yeah, Chase yeah. places that he probably can't go in now? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Things uh, to think about. Well, who, I mean, well, you know, I mean, uh, oh, shoot. I want to talk about this, but I know very next to nothing about it. <laughs> but Alex Jones, did you see what just happened to him? Did he get like the, he got the, the fine finally yeah, paid out it was to a, the families? Well, he got the court ordered him to pay a billion dollars, which I was like, that's a little excessive, hey. you know, like, because it, it's, oof. Yeah, I mean, who knows? I mean, they'll probably settle. Um, but, I mean, for sure, the boy said some wild yeah. stuff, oh. you know? Oh, yeah. Wild stuff. But this is the thing with Alex Jones. and like, Oh, boy. I know, I know. <laughs> but, like, he, I he's also said truthful things. Like, he's been talking about Bohemian Grove, for years and that's a thing he's been talking about epstein and like a, a like a sex pedophile island for years you know um but the sandy hook stuff was rough dude yeah. but so i'm like like yes he probably should pay something but a billion dollars it's like but then that that that's like me i'm just like are you kidding me? I'm like, what about all these news organizations that lied to us about the weapons of mass destruction yeah. that caused the taxpayers millions of dollars and like and like thousands and thousands and thousands of troops that lost their lives? What about the Gulf of Tonkin where they lied? The media lied about a, a, a tourist ship getting sunk by the vietnam and then we went to a pointless war like any war that we've gone to in the last i don't know like 30 40 years was all based on a lie Mm. and they don't gotta pay jack shit but no alex jones he's a squeaky said some wild stuff to his 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 niche audience and you gotta pay a billion dollars get the fuck out of here dude (laughs) seriously dude I think he's made an example out of them. They're just oh, 100%. Like, and, like, you can't and talk like, like that. I think you, can, you can't, like, there ne- definitely needs to be repercussions for that. But my problem, again, is, like, it's, like, because he's not an elite of the world. Yeah. You know? And he, he has to pay the price. But if, you know, any of the elites do something wild or say something wild, nothing happens. Like, mm-hmm. with, uh, with the whole housing market collapse in 2008, 2009, one person went to prison. Yeah. One person went Bullshit, to prison. Bullshit, yeah. So it's like, I mean, yeah, Alex Jones, you should pay money. Like you, well, it, well, then actually, this is also the thing. It's like, he said some things that weren't true, that he thought was true, but were untrue. But I think what, what the problem was were his followers. Because those people, hara- like, <sighs> you know, because that's where it's like, because at some point, like if St. Albans Central grows, and St. Alban grows his influence. I'm probably going to be more careful about what I say. Because it's like, you're in some ways, you're responsible. Like So, like, Alex Jones and Sandy Hook didn't happen. And then all of his followers go harass the parents. Which is so 
I can't even imagine doing that. No. You know? But like what kind of fucking losers are like Alex Jones like apostles, you know? Al like I I think Alex Jones is one of the most entertaining people in the world, but he's got to hate his fan base, you know? He has to hate his fan base. Like, dude, these are a bunch of losers who, like, like a bunch of incels who live <laughs> in, like, their parents' basements. He made still, a lot of know? money off them, though. That's for he sure. He made a ton of money. But $1 billion, dude, that's a lot. So, mm. congratulations. Um, way, to, way to keep someone under your thumb. All right, I think I'm done today. <laughs> Boys and girls and... Uh, my non-binary pals, you know, thanks for listening. Have a great day. St. Albans Central. I don't even know what episode we're on, but uh, we're doing okay. We're still we're still out here, Bubba's. Thanks for listening, y'all. See ya.